Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome to Do You Believe on Paranormal Zone TV. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm so happy to see you all in the chat room. I took a peek over there. And, you know, tonight... Oh, hey, for all of you who have not subscribed to my channel, would you please give my show also a like and please subscribe? I'd really appreciate it. Now, tonight, my show is on The Murder at Corpsewood. And I have an awesome guest with me. His name is Matt Scott. Um, impacted me, la uh, uh, I guess, last year when I had uh, I had already aired a show on this murder case. And Matt said, "Hey, you know, Noreen, you know, I, I'm I, I work for the sheriff's department, and my dad uh, was involved in that case, and um, I'd really like to come on the show and and tell your viewers." Um, what I know about this case. So I accepted his offer. And so everybody, let's welcome Matthew Scott Battle to the show. Thanks, Scott, for joining us. Matthew, for joining us tonight. Hi, uh, Noreen. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Oh, yeah. And and just one other thing. Let's let them know that um, you have um, uh, written two books. And I'm not sure, are they still for sale, those books, on uh, Amazon? They are. They're uh, Corpsewood and Corpsewood the Remains. I wrote them under a pen name of John Scott um, for several different reasons. Um, uh, I had a couple of friends read them and actually tell me that they read too much like police reports. So uh, uh, they're, they're accurate. Um, but uh, I'm not the greatest writer in the world, but what you'll find in there uh, is accurate. It can be proven uh, through physical evidence and uh, evidence that was obtained through courthouse documents. So uh, what you read in those books is, is accurate. Awesome. <clears throat> so, Matthew, now would you tell the viewers what you wrote to me about how you got involved in this case? Sure. Um, I was maybe two years old when the actual murders occurred at Corpsewood. So throughout my entire life, I've heard the story of Corpsewood, which happened about 15 miles from, from where I live. Um, as a child in school, the other kids on the playground or in class would, would talk about Corpsewood and, and it, it it became sort of a local legend and, and grew. Uh, it, the people that knew about it, it just started growing and growing. And, of course, you have the stories that grow and grow from it. So as I got older, um, got into high school, kept hearing the stories, but I was able to do a little more searching, figure out what, what were the actual facts with books with um, as the internet developed, I was able to uh, locate more documents on it and, and some of the people that were actually directly involved with the case. Uh, followed my father's footsteps and then joined the uh, Floyd County Sheriff's Office uh, 15 years ago. While I was in uh, the police academy, uh, I was fortunate enough to have the lead investigator as one of my teachers. Uh, he worked with the Chattooga County, excuse me, Chattooga County Sheriff's Office at the time of the murders, and he was the lead investigator. His name is Tony Gilliland. Uh, oh, yes. I saw an article that he wrote. Um, yeah, go ahead, honey. Right. He was, uh, he was very shaken by what he, he found at Corpsewood, uh, he and the other investigators. It was something that has never been... Seen. Uh, it, it had never been seen, and to that degree, it still hasn't been seen in in this area. Uh, now, as for other areas, I, I can't say, but the items that were found, the way they built their home, and by they, I mean Sputter and Odom, uh, something like that was was not not heard of around here. You know, this is this is considered uh, the Bible Belt. Oh, I can go two miles down the, the, the highway that runs through my town 
uh, either way and run into at least two churches within two miles. Um, so, and that's in the Appalachian. Like that right. Yeah, that's up in the Appalachian foothills. That's right. That's right. Um, Stutter and Odom, uh, they got they caught the attention of a lot of locals when they first moved in. Of course, uh, we'll get we'll get into into that a little bit later. But um, yeah, in around here, something like that was never never heard of, especially to the degree. Uh, to which they carried it. Now, how did the now they <clears throat> now the can, do you know the story about Scudder and um, Doctor Scudder and Joseph Odom? I can give them a little history on them if you want me to, or can you do that? Oh, I can. I'd be glad to do that. Oh, okay. So, would you would you tell them about Doctor Scudder <clears throat> and how you know where this all started from? Do, do sure. You, okay. Uh, Doctor Doctor Charles Scudder. Uh, was originally born in Wisconsin, and if you, it's kind of interesting if you look into Wisconsin and see the type of people that that Wisconsin have has produced from Ed Gein to uh, what was the other uh, uh, cannibal that they uh, oh, died God. in? There were several. <laughs> there were several yeah, cannibals. So anyway, Scudder, Dr. Scudder was originally from Wisconsin. And he moved to Chicago and uh, pursued a career in um, uh, pharmaceutical uh, drugs, uh, mind-altering drugs uh, for University of Loyola, which is a Catholic college. And uh, he studied uh, mind-altering drugs. As a matter of fact, when, when they went in the house, they found two vials of uh, lab-grade LSD, uh, which was more than a, a lifetime supply. Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't know Scudder that. Was, I didn't know that. Go ahead. Right, right. Scudder was uh, married um, and had children of his own. Um, and Scudder wrote later on an article for Mother Earth News, and you can find that article online. Just type in uh, Charles Scudder, uh, Mother Earth News, and, and you'll, you'll find all sorts of results. But you can read that online, and um, Scudder explains himself why he left uh, Chicago, Illinois, and moved here to the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. He claimed that he felt closed in, dead and dying, believe are some of his words. Um, Joey Odom was Scudder's lover here in Georgia. Now that started sometime when they were in Chicago. Joseph Odom actually helped uh, Dr. Scudder around the house. He was, you know, what, what you would look at as kind of a, of a groundskeeper uh, and helped around the house, helped with kids, things such as that. I don't know why Scudder decided to leave his wife or if it was a mutual agreement, but for some reason or other, Scudder sold his home in Chicago and took his pension and money he had, and I believe that there was also a small inheritance that he got. Yeah, he was getting about $100 a month. Uh, that's right. That's right. And what they did was they put Scudder's money in the bank and basically lived off the interest, is what they did here in, in Georgia. So there was really never a large amount of money uh, uh, involved here. Yeah, and then I read, too, that he decided he wanted to leave everything below. He wanted to go in kind of somewhat semi-isolation. He wanted to leave all the luxury stuff behind. He had had enough of it. And besides that old mansion that he was living in, I think it was in Chicago? Was it in Chicago? Right. It was It was either, I don't know if it was actually in the city limits, but it was very close to Chicago if it wasn't in Chicago. Yeah, and he said that whole area was decaying. 
The mansion was old. It was costing him a fortune to live there. And he just, he just, and the students weren't acting right. They were like acting up and going crazy. And he, he had just started like getting enough of it. He, he was older now and, and he didn't want to, he didn't want to have to put up with this stuff anymore. And, and Joey, Joe Odom, who had been with him for 17 years as his servant and, and cook, I, I guess they became an item and, um, and wanted something different. And from what I understand, Dr. Scudder had written, he really wasn't sure about what area to go in, but he studied maps and, and, and geological surveys. And, and I guess he was kind of thinking of the Georgia area or, or about in, in that area. So he had written um, to real estate. Uh, he had sent letters to real estate agents and he finally had gotten a, a reply back. And this real estate agent said that there was uh, 40 acres of uh, hardwood timbers uh, for sale. And they had, honey, what? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm saying yes, that's right. Yeah, and so they had taken a ride up there and checked it out, and, and I guess they fell in love with the property. And it was cheap. It was cheap. They didn't say how much he paid for it, but they said it was cheap. Right, it was, uh, the market value of it back then would have been very low simply for the reason that it was on a mountain, uh, and, and a lot of people will, will argue with me as to actually what is a mountain. Around here, we're in what's considered the ridge and valley region of the Appalachian Mountain. So you won't find a peak higher than about twelve to 1,500 feet in this vicinity. So, so you know, he wasn't stuck up. Where, where it was cold all the time. He was at an elevation that, you know, he, he, they were able to enjoy the summer and spring months, but at the same time, they were isolated yeah, that's from what, every side. Yeah, that's what he wanted. He didn't want to have to have those cold, snowy, wintry months. I, yeah. Um, you know, um, also, the, the castle that they, that they built, um, they used 45 thousand bricks to build this that's right and and the castle um the pictures in the book uh the original book that was that was printed uh, about a year and a half after the murders shows the house really a lot bigger than than what it is oh you mean it, it looks huge right and it's really not if you if you were ever to i've, I've been i've been to books where uh, one time, and and uh, took some of my own pictures, and uh, th it's not very big at all. Uh, so the 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 pictures in the book make it look bigger than what it actually is. But he was very smart in the in the way that he built his castle in the woods. The walls consisted of three layers. You had an outside bridge, and then you had several inches of dead space dead airspace. Then you had a middle brick. And then on the other side of that, you had the inner wall brick. So you had you had two dead airspaces that served as insulation so that they could keep the house warm and cool oh. you know, as the temperature demanded. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Right. And and they, they built this themselves. They had, I think they did have some help, but it was all done with hand tools. That's right. Um, now, as far as the cement mixing, I don't know if they had help uh, with cement mixer or hand tools, uh, but they did. They built it entirely themselves. They didn't contract any work. They did it all themselves. And Scudder was very adamant about uh, uh, doing things himself, is, is what I gather from what I can read about it. And she wanted this. There was some mail found. Some correspondence that he had from some people that were in prison, and Scudder's Scudder's idea and and what he was shooting for was a a, a school or and I use that term loosely uh, for for the occult. So he put he he built he built Portswood. Uh, so that would serve that purpose. No way, Matt. No.
No, uh, that's the first I heard of that. Right. There were letters. Um, and uh, let's say I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, he's corresponding with a guy who is at Attica uh, State Prison in New York. Um, and, and this is a quote to Scudder. I went to Wicca meeting when I first started getting into this religion. The guy started hollering for blood for sacrifice, so I gave him blood, all right. I shot him in the shoulder. And uh, I left out one word there that some viewers may not appreciate, but that's the type of people that he were, he was corresponding with in prison. Oh. Um, now, Wicca, uh, Wicca in itself... Uh, uh, First, I'm going to start off with saying, because I know that there'll be a lot of comments, what happened to Joseph Bodum and and, and uh, Dr. Charles Scudder was reprehensible. Uh, no matter what religion that they were involved in, uh, nothing could justify them being murdered in cold blood the way they were. However, having said that, there is... Uh, evidence to show that they were practicing not only Wicca, which in most people's opinion is is a lighter form of white magic. Um, they were also into the black arts and into, into black magic. Dr. Scudder commented to one of his friends uh, at the time, one of his acquaintances, that the reason that he left Christianity was because of the lack of power. It didn't have enough power. Um, really? So he, he I, I don't know how he got into the occult. I don't know what introduced it. He was a very smart man. Um, but he uh, eventually amassed a pretty big library uh, uh, a couple of thousand books is what I've read from reports and, and other uh, documents. But he amassed a large occult library that had uh, books in it that taught everything from Wicca to uh, voodoo. Yes, voodoo as well. And... Uh, and and they were into a lot of sex and and uh, male pornography. Right, Doctor Scudder uh, spoke of another another um, guy I met in a in a different school in a school I was taking for, for the sheriff's office, and he lives in Chattooga County, and his dad owns the pharmacy that Scudder used. At one time, Joseph Odom was in a car accident, and it roughed him up pretty bad. With Dr. Scudder uh, having a, a knowledge of medicine, uh, he wasn't a medical doctor, but he did have a knowledge of medicine. He was able to take care of Joey in their home. And so he used the pharmacy that, that this acquaintance had, uh, his dad owned the pharmacy, and Sorry, I got off, got off track. Oh. Anyhow. Okay, you were talking about uh, Joey got in a, an accident. He was pretty scarred up or whatever, and, and Dr. Scudder used the pharmacy to take care of Joey? That's right. And the uh, the man who owned the pharmacy, I, I met his son, and he said that he remembers visiting corpse work when he was about 12 years old. Uh, the murders had happened maybe a month or two prior uh, to him visiting Fort Cook. And it was Sheriff uh, McConnell. He, uh, uh, his dad was friends with Sheriff McConnell at the time. Oh, and my God. So I... he, was, he was able to go up into the pink room, which was the three-story chicken house. Oh, let me show him a picture of that. Oh, hey, everybody. <clears throat> I also want to let you know that Matt, Matt, how, how, Matt sent me a DVD that has authentic um, 
a video from who who took that video? That video was shot by the uh, Susan County Sheriff's Office and uh, the lead investigator in the case. Um, it was shot by, uh, in the video, you'll see a man holding a pen, uh, and he's pointing out certain things in the video. That was Tony Gilliland, and uh, he had a cameraman, and that was back in the days of, you know, the big, huge VHS cameras mm-hmm. that you had to hold on your shoulder, so mm-hmm. that's what it was shot with originally. How did you get a copy? How did you get a copy of that, vi- that authentic video? Uh, a friend of mine, uh, I worked with another another guy I worked with at the sheriff's office, had went to college and he did a college paper on Fort Wood, and he got the video from Tony Gilliland. Oh my God! Uh, um, <clears throat> that's not copyrighted, is it? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's too old anyway. It's, it was it was right. taken in, what, 1982. Uh, when did they discover those murders? Oh, uh, did you say when did they? Yeah, I know they were killed in 1982 in December, but how long did it take for them to find the bodies? I think it was about uh, four days. Oh, okay. I'm not mistaken. Okay, but I want you to continue the story. Now, another thing I, w- I just want to tell the viewers the, okay, now here's the here's the the chicken coop, and it's I think it was also called the pink room where they did their um, parties and drugs and stuff because Doctor Scudder didn't let anybody in the castle. He did everything, all his parties, and I think they had orgies and stuff going on in, in this in this chicken coop they called it. That's right. The the first two stories were reserved just for chickens. That's what it was. And the, the top floor was a room that they had painted pink and and had a bed and a couch in. And it was called the pink room. Uh, This acquaintance that I had met in a a, a class I was taking with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, it was his father who who owned the uh, farms, was allowed to go in Corpsewood uh, not long after the murders occurred. And he said that in the pink room, all around in the pink room were... um, homosexual magazines, um, pornography, pictures of the parties that Scudder had thrown, and lots and lots of, like, like, like we said, lots and lots of pornography. Yeah. You know, in, in, one of, in, in that video, I, I had edited, I was up till 5 o'clock in the morning this morning, editing that video into, into uh, four different clips. Now one clip I'm, I don't think I'm going to show. I'll have to ask the viewers, and if I do show it, I'm deleting it right after the right after the show when it goes in archives. Um, it's they had a I couldn't figure out what it was because I didn't have you to talk to when I was editing this video, but they showed a picture of I it looked like maybe Joe that was naked, but his back was turned, and there was a group of people like they were having a party. So I'm assuming it was. A picture right. taken I, at one of. I, I know, I know the picture you're talking about. Uh, I believe that that was actually Scudder. Oh, it uh, was. Scudder had Scudder had uh, the longer, uh, blondish looking hair. Oh, okay. I got those two mixed up. Yeah, it was the blonde haired right. one. Oh, right. well, I didn't, I didn't put that in the video. And there was also in that video. Oh my God, there was pornography in there. Oh my God, I cut it out. There was no way. Uh, it's it's oh. very great. It is. It was very great. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure I cut it out. I I think I had a picture of it, but there, uh, I wasn't going to show that. And um. So and then also I wanted to tell the viewers. I, I don't know if we covered this. I, I I I did we tell them there was no running water, there was no electricity, and they had a refrigerator and and somehow they rigged it up where it could run on kerosene. Now how brilliant is that? They had a right. chemical at, toilet. At that, time, at that time, there was, uh, and still to this day, there's no utilities where they were. So they they had a well. Now, now I, uh, earlier we said they did everything themselves. I will have to take that back. They, the only thing they didn't do themselves was grill the well. They had to have a well grill. And uh, I don't know, I, I don't know how they got the water pumped up from the well, but. Uh, some, I, 
I, I imagine they had a hand pump. Um, but there was a well. There was no electricity whatsoever, and they did have a refrigerator that was it ran on kerosene. I know. And uh, you can still find those, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. I looked online and found where you, you, can, you can still get them. Okay. Hey, you know what? I think now's a good time. I I have um I have a couple of videos. This okay, guys. This is from re the real footage. This they went up there at the crime scene, and like Matt said, they took this video. Now it's really poor quality. It's it's from 1982. I imagine when when they first took it, it was in really good shape because how, how many times was this, uh, you know, copied over and over and over, but it's right. still, this you... is probably a copy of a copy oh, of a copy. Oh yeah. And that's what happens. It loses its resolution. So I want to show you. So the first video I'm going to show you, um, th they took the exterior. Okay. And I hope you don't mind. It's about, it's about a two minute video. So do you, I'm going to show that to you. Um, okay. So this is the real deal it came from um the uh archives of the um the, the what do they call them the sheriff's department that's right okay it's county sheriff's office all right so i'm going to share this with you guys now so hold on let me let me grab this hold on Get a shot of those other things off to your right. You get the ground level too. Yeah, I'm taking the ground level all the way. Yeah. I'll show their picture. I'm showing it to them now. Okay. They, yeah, they were killed by Avery Brock and um, uh, West. Tony West, first, yeah. Right? Tony West, that's right. Um, now, the motive for murder was actually pretty lame, in my opinion, which you can't really have a good motive for murder, but... Uh, the youngest of the two, which, uh, which was Avery Brock, had been hunting in the area and came across the, the castle and came across Dr. Scudder. And uh, apparently Dr. Scudder liked what he saw in uh, Avery Brock and told Brock that he could hunt the area. So he, on a regular basis, would come hunting 
And pretty soon it developed into a physical relationship between Scudder and Avery Brock. Um, Scudder would, uh, and Brock had several, uh, had several meetings, sexual meetings, and Avery Brock at the time, I believe, was 17. Yeah. Worked as a pup litter. Yeah. He hauled, he hauled logs, or excuse me, he didn't haul them. He, he actually cut the wood and loaded the trailers. Um, but I don't know if he got uh, angry at, at Scudder or, or it was uh, a matter of him getting angry with himself for, for whatever he did with Scudder. But anyhow, he got with Tony West, who was a friend, and told Tony West, you know, there's this castle in the woods. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of money in it. Uh, so why don't you and I go and and rob this this these two guys and then get their money? So uh, Wes was all for it. And if you look in Wes's background, Wes as a uh, as a as a young teenager, I believe he was 11 or 12, actually shot his nephew who was a infant. What? Uh, he did. He, he, his part of the story was that he came in from hunting one day and the child was sitting in the high chair and was scared of the gun. So Wes pointed the gun in his direction and made the statement, uh, see, it, it won't hurt you, and pulled the trigger. Oh. Um, I don't doubt it was an accident. And he unknowingly shot the, the toddler, but uh, or the infant, but uh, he did in fact shoot and kill his uh, nephew, I believe it was. I oh my so, God, I never so heard West, that. West was a was a was a crooked limb from if, if you'll pardon that expression. West was a crooked limb from the time he was small, a uh, small person or, or, or a young person. So he had. Uh, Later on, he grew up, and he, he got it gotten into a stabbing incident with another family member. It wasn't fatal, but it was a stabbing incident that he did time. Uh, he, he did some prison time for. So Avery Brock got with uh, Tony West, and, and they conspired to go rob and kill Stutter and Odom. They took with them two other people, uh, Teresa Hudgens and the name of the young man, other young man that went with them, escapes me right now. They had, they didn't know why they were going to books with uh, West and uh, Brock had told them they were just going to go ride around. And they were in a, uh, a javelin. Uh, I, I, I don't know. What company makes made the javelin? But that's the type of car they were in. So they went to Corpswood. Um, West and Brock told Teresa Hudgens and the other young fellow up there that they were going to go just get some wine and see the Devil Worship. So they they arrived and were greeted by Doctor Scudder. Uh, before. Uh, Uh, excuse me. Yeah, the four, the four uh, young young people exited the, the javelin and followed Scudder up into pink room and began to drink wine, which Scudder and Odom made their own homemade wine from. They had a vineyard, they had a, a grape vineyard. Um, they began to drink wine, and uh, the younger kids in the group began. To and by the younger kids, I mean Brock and, and Teresa Hudgens, uh, began to uh, use a drug. Uh, it was an inhalant. It was, it was called Tootaloo. Oh. And to my knowledge, uh, I researched it, and Tootaloo was a mixture of uh, paint thinner, and I believe it was, it was uh, gasoline and paint thinner. Oh, my uh, God. But it was a, it was an inhalant. 
And, oh, it was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm wrong, not gasoline, it was, um, it was blue. It was uh, the model blue and paint thinner, not gasoline, I, I, I was wrong. Oh, but, <laughs> I could imagine. <laughs> they, they, they began to use it, and, um, and Brock, uh, the younger one, the younger guy, uh, told the group, that he was going to go back to the javelin and get some more tutelage. So he slipped off to the javelin, and what he was actually doing was getting a twenty-two rifle. So he got the rifle, and as he walked back by Corpsewood, he saw Joseph Odom in, in the kitchen, which was on the bottom floor of the house. And Joe, Joseph Odom was cleaning uh, dishes and uh, tidying up around the house, which was kind of like his job. Uh, and Brock just started to shoot. He shot through the window. He shot the two English Mastiffs that were asleep beside the heater. And, and Mastiffs are dogs, big bulldogs, English bulldogs. Right, right. big English Mastiffs. They're, they're very, very large dogs. So they were sleeping beside the wood heater getting warm. Oh. And, of course, he also shot Joey. So Joey fell to the ground dead, and the the Mastiffs were dead. Now, oh, uh, Dr. Scudder and the others heard the shots, uh, but they didn't know what to think of it. At least Scudder didn't know what to think of it uh, yet. So... After shooting the dogs and shooting Joey, um, Avery Brock went back up into the peak room. And when Stutter saw the gun, uh, he thought, uh, this is my opinion. He was trying to make the best of a bad situation. He knew he was in trouble. So he kind of jokingly said, bang, bang. And this is uh, testimony. This is from court documents from uh, Teresa Hutchins. The, that, that's what Stutter said. Oh, so, yeah. Now, Teresa Hudgens, she, uh, that night, that day that they were there with, with Tony, was it Tony and uh, Brock, there were two other people, and Teresa Hudgens was one of them. Now, she has also written a book uh, with uh, two other girls, and she was an eyewitness to this, and I and I believe that she said when she was there with them, please don't hurt anybody. And there was a, also another boy that was with them, and he will not. He was an eyewitness, and he will not. He refuses to talk about this, from what I understand. That's right. Uh, Teresa Hudgens was mere, she was an innocent victim just as much as Scudder and Odom. Though, though, though she was there with. Perpetrators. Uh, she she had no uh, knowledge of what was going to happen, um, but she did. She tried to plead with them and ask them, please, you know, please don't do this. Don't hurt anyone. Well, when Avery Brock came back up into the pink room and and stuttered, replied, "Bang bang," um, that's when Tony West uh, and Avery Brock tied Doctor Scudder up. And all of them that were in the chicken house uh, got down, went down the ladder, and and I don't know exactly how they went down the ladder. Was he must have been tied? Scudder must have been tied with his hands in front of him at that time. Otherwise, you you can't carry a human being down a ladder that way uh, very easily. But anyhow, they made the way back to the cast to the house and stepped over uh, Joey Odom's body and proceeded to go to the couch, which was in the living room, and which was also on the bottom floor of the building. Can, at this point now, can I, <coughs> can I show them another video? Sure. And sure. I'm, I'm not sure. Some of the interior. Okay. Okay, let me play this one for them. Yeah. Look at that thing, that's a good I'm going to paint on the ramp from where I left off so it'll make a little sense. Okay. This is all right. Oh, 
the bedroom. I won't sleep right for a week. Did you do one? Sure. Do a little out. And I'm going to go around and around to your right. Okay. Well, I'll move out of your way now. That's all right. I'm going to stop right there. Okay. This is necessary. I'm getting hanging on. Okay, when you start backing out, be sure and get that kerosene lantern okay. in front of this broken. Okay, now that was <clears throat> that that particular video was taken upstairs in the bedroom, and I have so then okay, so let's get back to uh, Brock and and Tony and the two other uh, uh, locals that were at at the, at the scene. Um, they they were there when when Tony and Brock. Who did the killing? Both of them. They both had. Uh, both, it? They both did. Uh, the way that it went was to begin with. Avery Brock shot uh, Joseph Odom and the two dogs, um, and then they they all went into the house. Okay, and by all I mean everybody that was there was in the house. Um, Brock and West. Uh, started to uh, ransack the house looking for anything of value. Um, they weren't smart enough to know that they passed up a lifetime supply of LSD that was in Scudder's desk, which I'm sure would have been of interest to them. But uh, they were looking for, for jewelry, for... Uh, were ransacking the house looking for anything of value. And uh, Scudder and Odom... Uh, had nothing of value as far as uh, uh, Brock and um, and the other guy was concerned. The uh, West, I'm sorry. Uh, they uh, they found a ceremonial dagger, which we'll get into that in just a few minutes. Okay. Uh, but uh, it was a ceremonial dagger used in in uh, ritualistic magic, and they found a 22 pistol of Scudder. They found uh, some handcuffs, uh, which they used later. They found uh, just just small items like that. They never found any money. I believe the total loot was was valued at around between 150 and 300 dollars. Which, granted, in eight, 1982, that was considerably more money than it would be now, but it still wasn't. Uh, you know, it's the equivalent to knocking over a, a gas station after they had cleaned the tills out of the drawer. Yeah. So after they got done looking for things of value, uh, uh, they asked Scudder, Dr. Scudder, who was at this time tied up on the couch. And uh, they said, listen, if you don't tell us where you're hiding the money, we're going to burn you with a soldering iron. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and Scudder, knowing there it, that that there wasn't any electricity, said, I don't have, I don't even have any electricity. How are you going to burn me with a soldering iron? Um, now, uh, I don't know if this enraged Scudder and West, but uh, Teresa Hudgens was still uh, asking you know, please, let's just go, let's just leave him alone, let's go, let's leave. But Brock and West uh, refused to leave. Scudder saw Odom laying in the floor and stood up. His hands were, were tied 
guy behind him, but his his legs were not were not bound. So Scudder stood up to walk across the room to to try to help his partner Joseph Bodum and Brock. Excuse me, Tony West uh, opened fire on Doctor Scudder. Um, and according to the testimony of Teresa Hudgens, Dr. Scudder's last words were, I asked for this. Yeah. Which is very sad. Uh, as I said, I, I don't believe, uh, I don't agree with, with their brand of religion. Um, I absolutely don't agree with them on that, but they were two human beings who were not, as far as we know, had not bothered anyone, and they were killed in cold blood. Exactly. Uh, Dr. Scudder was an atheist, but, you know, it, that's your right. But what and these, That's right, that's right. You know... That, that was their right, if they chose to live that way. Uh, in my opinion, that's their God-given right. Um, I, me personally, like I said, I don't believe in it, but, you know, that, that's, that was for them, that was a decision for them to make. I, all, did did you read their? Uh, were you able to read their their co their court testimony? Uh, the, I went to the the Chattu County Courthouse, and this was this was probably over five years ago. And uh, asked to see. It's kind of a funny story. Asked to see the uh, the court documents uh, of the Scudder and Odom murder trial. And it was such a popular request that they had the transcripts sitting in a box on a table uh, inside one of the rooms of the courthouse. So a clerk uh, kindly pointed me in the direction. She said they're right there on the table. And there were two big boxes. I would say each box was about a foot and a half by a foot and a half and about a foot and a half deep. And they were they were all full of transcripts. Oh so my. I, I didn't read all of the transcripts, but I did go through the the uh, the high points of the case, I guess you would say. How long was the trial? Do you know? I I really don't know. I couldn't answer that with any accuracy. Uh, did what was their background on these two? Well, as I said, with West or with West, Tony West, he had shot and killed a, a child, a, a baby, by accident when he was a youth, and I believe that's what set him on the wrong path, on the mm. path of, of of what what ended up ruining his life completely. Uh, well, I also understand that uh, when Brock was talking about and. Now, how did those two connect? Because Brock was telling him about about Doctor Scudder and and the the mansion and all the stuff that was included in this mansion, all this and that 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 golden that was it a gold plated harp. And right. um, now the only thing is that was upstairs in their bedroom. Um, right, right, and he enjoyed he he wrote his own music for that harp and enjoyed playing it uh, playing it. In, you know, out in the woods, so that the music would echo through the canyon. You know, it was a, it wasn't really a canyon, but there was a canyon, a small canyon below where they built. Oh my God! How, so how did um, how did so uh, that's how they said that uh, Wes got in, in, involved with Brock because he was hearing all this. So, do you know what the relationship was and how they connected? There was a mutual friend. I believe that introduced the two, uh, and I believe the mutual friend was a relative of West. Now uh, I can't I can't remember names right off the top of my head, uh, but I believe that's how they met. I don't know how long they were friends before murders occurred, but that is how they met. Mm. It was a mutual friend. Oh God! All right, I have one. I have another video I want to show you. Um, I believe it's still the interior, and you'll get a feel for 
I, and I think this shows all the thousands of books that he had. And I believe on this video, Matt, is the one where one of the, what do you call those? Are they sheriffs, detectives? What do you call, what do you call up there? Um, well, here, it, it depends on which county you're in. It's Chattooga County. Uh, they have one county-wide law enforcement agency, and it's the Chattooga County Sheriff's Office. So they're, okay. So it would be the sheriffs then that they would send out to do these investigations? That's right. Okay. And you'll hear one of them talk about the books that he that he was just glancing. Uh, I guess they were on the table. And he, he I remember him saying voodoo, and I think occult. And, and then pornography, and right. Uh, all right. So here, let me play. Let me play this one. Hold on. Okay. Man, I'm leaving. Your hands. You got something to wash them off once you get through handling them. No, I'm not planning on eating anymore. <laughs> Twice the size of me. Get on with it. <laughs> Okay, some more cartridges down there. No, a minute. Okay, put it on the pillow. We fine? It's working, Mac. Watch. Watch your cord, kid. You fish and turn the lamp on. Oh, oh. Look at that. What do we take? <laughs> That's what I was going to look at. What's the date on this? I've got just some straight old color here. Like How? Burned. Uh, not quite a year after the murders, if I'm remembering correctly. And the police really don't know who burned Corpsewood. Uh, Corpsewood, there were, uh, I was saying how when Corpsewood burned, they never really found out who burned Corpsewood. Some say that it was some of the occultists from the area that didn't want the secrets and the books and such as that to, to be leaked out. And some say it was the local church members that didn't want something as hideous as Corpsewood in their town or in their county. So... So they burned it. So I'm, I'm not blaming either group, but that's the rumors that circulated when corpses were burned. Oh, you know, now some I read that they said that Brock started the the. Um... No, Brock was incarcerated uh, when it burned. It burned uh, almost a year after the murders. Oh, so whoever reported that was wrong. That's correct. Uh, uh, that that was misinformation. If that's what they reported. And you know the thing about this is, you can't get a straight answer. Right, um, and uh, like I said, everything that that I'm telling you is is uh, I can I can back up with either court documents or or um, witness testimony. Um, and, and now the paranormal side of it is something that you know you have to take with a grain of salt because. Everybody has such different belief systems. Um, and, of course, Scudder and Odom were on the bridge of, of witchcraft and the occult. All right, so... The... What, what's... Now, I also, I heard something about a, a curse that somebody had taken... What do you know about that, taking anything from that property? I know, and I wrote about it in one of the books. I don't remember if it was 
first one or second one. Like I said, they're both very short reads, uh, and and they're very they're factual, but they're both very short reads. But in one of the books, I mentioned uh, somebody taking a brick as a memento from uh, Portswood, and uh, after the brick was taken, uh, they had an accident going down the mountain. Um, after the accident, they had the car taken to a uh, mechanic to see what the problem with the car was, and the mechanic said there's no problem with the car, so I don't know why this, why you had this accident. So, uh, supposedly, uh, there is an attachment, a spiritual attachment to to uh, anything that's taken from court to it. What do you know about the hauntings that are supposed to... I heard it's the area is really haunted. The area is is, is first of all it is very very remote. Um, well, as I said before, you're you're miles away from any kind of a established community. They were by themselves um, nearly all of the time. Visitors were allowed at the property, but they were not allowed inside the castle for the most part. So. As far as the place being haunted, you have to look back at some of the practices that evidently, the evidence says that Stutter and Odom were involved in. Um, one of the practices that they were involved in is, is Levian Satanism. Uh, Levian Satanism uh, started in San Francisco, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my husband actually uh, knew him. Right. Oh, is that right? Yeah, my husband. Right. Yeah, well, he's my husband's retired now, but yeah, he was uh, walking the when he first started the police department. He used to walk the beat, and it was down in the Tenderloin. And um, uh, Anton Levey, which his real name is Levy, and his real name right. I think is Howard. Um, he he got in, he got involved in it. He was he was like an actor and a dancer and got involved in the circus. He was a musician. But he lived in San Francisco. He painted his Victorian black, and he loved the police department. And he made friends with the police department. There was actually uh, an investigator. His name was Jack Webb, and they became friends. And um, <coughs> it was Jack Webb who, who talked him into doing what he was doing because uh, LaVey was uh, making money off of doing uh, speeches and conferences and, and doing talks. I think also he was doing talks in his home. <coughs> and so this Jack Webb told him, hey, you can make money off of this. Why don't you start a church? And he did. But anyway, uh, <coughs> I'm right. sorry. And, and his I, church grew in, into what's now known as, as the, the Church of Satan. Right. It was the, if I'm not mistaken, it was the first established uh, recognized church. <coughs> and did you know LeVay used to call... LeVay used to call himself the biggest liar on earth. He Right, right. <coughs> and, and, and if you look at any of his interviews, uh, watch any of his interviews, um, LeVay was not a, a mean man. He was not a, a ugly Oh, let me tell you. Man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Matt. Wait a minute. I, I got something to tell you about him. He hated... Okay. He, he had a thing against women. He was extremely mean. He was mean to animals, and he used to beat his wife, and he was mean to his daughters. So that's what I, I read about now, him. Now, and, and his daughters, uh, uh, let's see, the blonde-headed daughter that he had that he actually baptized uh, in public into the church of Satan. Zena, I believe was her name. Oh, Zena, right. Has actually left the church, yes. and she's practicing... Uh, uh, another religion. It's it's not Christianity, uh, but it's it's another re religion. She doesn't have anything to do with it anymore. Yeah, she. No, I think I, I believe th now it's relocated to New York. Oh, because I think she was Germany that she was living in. That's right. Oh, and she but came she back to the United. Actually, I I actually did an interview with um, Anton Lavey's last wife. The, oh yeah. Yeah, I actually had I I actually interviewed her when I was on another uh, network. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. 
Oh, yeah. That, that was, I bet that was a very interesting. Oh, yes, it was. It was very interesting. I wish I had that video. But he um, he was quite something, that man. But he... Uh, he, 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 he was uh, on the outside. Uh, the outside looking in, you, he didn't look like a devil until no. he, uh, you know, dressed. He actually wore the costume. He, he had... Uh, Oh yeah, it, you know, to him he was like role playing, and he shaved his head because his wife dared him, and so he did, and so he kept it that way. Right, he was a big. Uh, he was more into it for the for the show. Exactly, you know? exactly. But he ended up writing the Satanic Bible, which he did. Uh, I've not read and, and don't intend to read, but a lot of people uh, that have. Dabble in the occult, uh, say, is uh, very profound, and, and he, he wasn't a dumb man. No, he wasn't. But anyway, uh, that's that's one uh, faction of the occult that Scudder and Odom were in. Uh, Scudder had a birthday card from the Church of Satan, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe it said it was his seventh birthday. Um, but the Levian birthday card, they, they and Satanists in birthday cards, they don't, they don't use the same dates. But they use from the day that you join the church. Yes, exactly. That, yeah. Your birthday. Exactly. So uh, they were involved in that. Uh, they had books on uh, Wicca, which we discussed earlier. But some of the darker stuff they were involved in. Uh, well, they were also involved in voodoo. Voodoo. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and voodoo can, can, is a system of magic. It originates around the, the uh, Caribbean, and it's largely, it's largely uh, uh, a little bit taken from Catholicism and a little bit taken from uh, some African religion, and it's kind of mixed, a mixture of those two, but uh, it, it's supposed to be a very powerful um, system of magic. Um now, earlier, uh, when you were showing the, the video, I mentioned a picture that was on the wall. It was a, it was a stained glass, I believe, but I think it, it was, I think it was built into the brick, and it was this hideous-looking uh, creature, uh, uh, a fat baby Buddha looking. Oh yeah, what was that? I believe that. What that was was called a transjugetian icon, the same as uh, if you would if, if you would uh, go into a, a, a Catholic church and see the stained glass window. Well, not only Catholic, but a lot of churches use stained glass windows. Uh, some some factions of of Christianity Christianity look at them as gateways to heaven. Beautiful, uh, beautiful works of art. Well, that's the same way that Scudder decorated his home. And a transjugetian icon is associated with the transjugetian magic, which is a black magic. Um, it has uh, ties to, um, oh, what's his name? The, uh, the, the man from Britain, Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley was big into Transjugatian magic, and the Transjugatian magic, all it means is, if I'm not mistaken, it's Pluto. The Yugoth is, is an ancient word for Pluto, and they believe that they can astral project themselves, and, and this sounds crazy, and to me it is crazy, but they believe, they really believe they can astral project themselves uh, to beyond our solar system and beyond Pluto into these dimensions uh, where where they can be gods or they can bring back power or other gods. Now, to me, I believe it's just a bunch of hockey, but there are people out there that believe in it. It's a, it's a type of ceremonial magic. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. So you have the fact that Stoner and Odom were involved in, in Satanism, uh, voodoo, uh, and, and I believe 
uh, from some of the pictures that I had on the wall of Transgessian magic. So they were actually practicing sorcery and black magic uh, on that mountain uh, in Corpsewood. I not to mention the fact that one of the windows in the house, and you showed this picture, was yeah. the sigil of Baphomet. It is the inverted pentagram with the goat of Mendez inside the star. Um, now, that is that that particular pentagram, I believe, was copyrighted by the Church of Satan. Um, well, but it, the, the Baphomet itself... Um, see, he, when he, he used it, but he knew. See, that, that, that uh, symbol, Baphomet, goes way back to ancient, uh, ancient the medieval, not in the medieval times. It was the medieval knights, uh, Templar, that used right, that not, emblem. Templar brought it back to your yeah. crusades. Uh, they, they brought the image back with them from the crusades, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It was the it was then that uh, started that emblem. Right, and if you look, if you look, the way you can tell that this emblem is is evil. Uh, now the emblem, the invert, the pentagram itself, just the pentagram has been in um, magic, uh, you know, uh, ancient forms of magic for for years and years, probably a thousand years. But the inverted pentagram. When the pentagram is is turned upside down, now that's when you need to take notice and see that it is actually an evil sign. And a lot of uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but if you take a star, just a regular pentagram, a regular, just take a regular star, and you stand it up, it's not inverted. You have what looks like two legs, two arms, and a head. Now, in the Bible. It, it says where when, when Lucifer was thrown from heaven, he looked like it was a star falling from heaven. So if you take that star and you invert it, it looks like Lucifer falling down from heaven. So that's where they get the inverted pentagram from as a symbol of evil. Mm. And that's why all of the, a lot of these uh, groups use it. Mm. So I, uh, there, there, there is evidence... There is evidence to suggest they were practicing black ritualistic magic. And and also, they were practitioners of Wicca. But you can practice Wicca, which is a, a considered white magic. You know, white magic is where somebody does, wants to do good for somebody. So they do a spell or an incantation. But you can practice both white and black magic at the same time. You don't, you don't have to be on one path or the other. So they were they were practicing a black magic and whatever follows of with their black magic. Uh, and by that I mean, right before Scudder was killed, uh, he wrote, he painted a self portrait, and this self portrait had him gagged and five bullet holes in his head. Oh, I remember hearing that. That's right. And <sighs> he, uh, an acquaintance that was in, in Corpswood asked him, well, what, what is this about? What did you paint this for? And he said, well, I believe that's how I'm going to die. And that is exactly how he died. He was, he was bound and gagged, and he was shot five times in the head. Yeah. He was. He also he also told another uh, I believe it was the storekeeper that he had had a demon that had been following following him around, and this was I believe a month about a month prior to the murder. Mm. So and and there's another little twist that a lot of people uh, don't know about you know. Uh, Dr. Scudder was involved in psychological pharmacology. He studied mind-altering drugs, uh, in particular LSD, which LSD was a um, the main drug, the main player in the MK Ultra project. Um, I don't know. 
I'm sure you're familiar with the MK Ultra. The what, honey? MK Ultra. No. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's actually been owned up to by our government, but it was when the government was using. They used some soldiers. They used some uh, FBI agents uh, to test LSD to to see what kind of effects that the LSD would have on them. And and one of the things that burst the case wide open was when was an FBI agent uh, was given LSD in his food in a hotel room while he was in the field or on the job and had a bad trip on it and ended up jumping over a ledge and killing himself. This was back in, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the 60s and 70s. But there's speculation that Dr. Scudder was involved in that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, some of the, the viewers wanted to, wanted to know how you got your expertise on this, what you're talking about. Um, expert, I will, first I, I'm going to go ahead and, and say I'm not an expert, but I have read, uh, I, I'm uh, very active in my church, uh, and for that reason I've, I've researched the occult and uh, some of the dangers that it has for young people, and in doing so I came across some of these um, systems of magic. Uh, that a lot of young people uh, fall into. Uh, there's also a couple of people, uh, uh, ministers online, uh, listen to. There's, um, I've had a couple of cases uh, in while I've been employed uh, in law enforcement that uh, had little bits of the occult, you know, scattered around inside of them. Uh, I've had some. Uh, training in my uh, years as a police officer. Uh, so as far as being an expert, there are many, many people out there that a lot more than I do about this stuff. But uh, some some formal training, but most of it is research. Come on. Well, I think I think poor Doctor Scuttle Scudder and. Um, and uh, Joe Odom, they're, I think getting involved with other human beings was their biggest mistake. They were fine. They wanted to be in semi-isolation. They wanted to have a good life and forget about all, 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 all the regular things that people do, you know, and, and, and just go kind of like nature, have no worries and no problems. And here they get involved with people, and look what happened to them. They got yeah. involved with, they attracted the wrong yep. people. They attracted the wrong people. That's right, and uh, that, that, that's exactly right. The, the, the evil, they, they were a victim of evil themselves uh, in, in, a, in Avery Brock and uh, Tony West. Uh, as I said, just because I don't agree with them, as far as their religious views goes, uh, by no means do I believe that they deserve what happened to them. It was uh, what happened to them was was hideous and it was evil. Uh, Brock and Avery uh, deserve to still be in prison to this day, which they are. I uh, believe one of your guests on this subject. Uh, said that uh, Tony West was able to claim uh, an insanity plea and is uh, living his life in a hospital somewhere in a uh, psych, psych, psych hospital, but that's not true. He is in the Georgia prison system. Both of them to this day are. Oh, yeah. I, I Yeah, I, I read that, too, that um, they put him back... Um, yeah, into into the prison. Right. Um, it's going to show, show it run down, Tony, all right? Day of the murder, how did they get into the castle? Did they get in into their castle because, you know, they don't allow anybody there? Did they? Do you think they got in because they had their guns? Uh, no, I believe that they got in because uh, 
number one because they uh, Avery Brock and and Scudder had already uh, been introduced to one another. They'd already met one another. So I believe when he saw who was coming up up the road, up Dead Horse Road, uh, he had no problem letting them in. Um, as I understand it, there wasn't a gate at the beginning of Dead Horse Road, that, the part that comes off of the main access road, but there was a gate closer to the house that he would uh, uh, keep open or keep closed. Uh, and I don't know what dictated it to be open or closed, but uh, he was used to people coming up and seeing his house, uh, seeing Corpsewood. And like I said, plus the fact that he already knew Avery Brock from previous encounter. I believe that's one way that, uh, one reason he allowed them on the property and into the pink room. Um, who, now who, oh, gosh, I remember, I remember reading how they discovered the bodies. Somebody reported it. They were, oh, uh, uh, do you know how they got up there? There was a man that was coming to the house to give them a message. Because that's they didn't. Right. Uh, okay. That's right. The man was coming. Uh, he was an acquaintance of Scudder and Odom, and he was coming to 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 tell them something. Uh, and I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he is the one that discovered uh, the body. Yeah, yeah. Because see, they had no phone. Right. And and now one thing I've, I've left I left out something that uh, you had asked me about uh, over a text or. The young man that they killed in Mississippi, um, see Scudder, uh, excuse me, uh, Brock, Avery Brock and uh, Tony West, uh, when, after they had ransacked Corpsewood, uh, they loaded up in uh, the javelin that they had ridden therein, and the javelin would not start. And uh, Tony, Tony West was reported to have said, uh, this was meant to be. Uh, so uh, they tried to jump start or push off the javelin to get it started. It wouldn't start. So they stole Scudder and Odom's black Jeep. And they took and left Teresa Hudgens, who was uh, um, not involved in the slayings. But they, they took her home and threatened her life if she told anybody and, and did the same to the young man that was with them. And then uh, Brock and West headed west, uh, and when they were in Mississippi, uh, they were at a rest stop, and a young man by the name of Kirby Phelps, who was uh, an officer in the Navy, um, was on his way home to visit his mother for the Christmas holidays, and uh, they, they took Mr. Phelps uh, at gunpoint uh, to behind the um, rest rest stop and in a pine thicket and, and handcuffed him with, some, with their handcuffs. And when Wes, uh, as I understand it, Avery Brock stayed back and unloaded the contents from the Jeep to Mr. Phelps's car. So uh, Wes was with Kirby Phelps and had him handcuffed and was going to handcuff him to a fence, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so when West went to take the handcuffs off of his hands and to cut one of the cuffs around the fence, Mr. Phelps took a swing at West and West in turn shot him in the head and killed him. And they stole his car and continued to drive west. And I can't remember if they made I believe they made it as far as Texas. But then they split ways and eventually ended, ended up coming back east and getting caught. Wow. Well, it, it is a very sad, sad story. Um... I feel so, I feel so bad for them. I feel so bad for them. It, oh my God. It, it. But you know what? Nobody really knows. Nobody was there. 
And the thing about it is when something like this happens, because they were living the life that they did, and there were a few people um, that were that came up up to the to the castle and did whatever. You don't know how many of those people lied and te- and, and exaggerated their stories about uh, about those two men, and that's, that's how true. it is. It's, that's it's human nature. I remember, I remember uh, when I was in uh, elementary school, and uh, a friend of mine lived closer to Cookswood than I did, but uh, anyway, uh, he, he was telling me some of uh, the stories he had heard, and, and he was told that, uh, or he said anyway, that there was still uh, a large uh, amount of, of jewelry and gold and such as that uh, buried at Corpsewood and that a lot of people have went up and bulldozed uh, a lot of the area looking for a, a a buried treasure or a, a loot, if you might say. Now, that was a extreme exaggeration that grew from just a, a small amount of truth. And what I, when I, what I mean by that is the uh, uh, Scudder and Odom did have a, a freezer, a deep freezer buried in the ground, but it was used like a root cell. Right. And the rumor got started that it was it was part of a a, um, a buried buried treasure or or money that they had buried around Corpsewood, which wasn't true at all. So there is a factor you you have to factor in that uh, uh, exaggeration when it comes to stories like this. And then, as I said before, uh, that this is not, as far as I know, uh, a, a religious. Uh, a forum or a place to discuss that, but even though I didn't, I don't agree with the way they live, they certainly did not deserve to die the way they died. No. Uh, nobody, nobody uh, has the right to do that to another human being. I um, know. That, that That is not bothering them better. No. Minding their own business. The, the, what, what happened to them was tragic and reprehensible. Yes, it, it was. And, and it's really sad because they all they wanted to be was left alone. But you know what? What what they were doing, Matt, um, it's gonna get you into trouble. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get those people that are attracted to that kind of stuff. And 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 these two young kids, that's what you get. You you gotta be really, really careful. That's right, um, and I believe that's what Scudder meant in his last words, was that he had built a place that was such, it was so out of place, for, especially for, for the area. I believe that he felt extreme guilt yeah. uh, for what had happened to Joey and what was about to happen to himself. Yeah. And that's oh. what I believe he meant with yeah. the last words. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. Well, um, Matt, um, thanks so much. You know, thank you so much for um, giving me um, that that DVD to share with the viewers. I had never, I've never seen the inside of the house, only uh, only certain pictures. And you know what? I, I, I'm really sorry. I did have the kitchen. I I had some of the kitchen uh, in, in the, one of the videos and... Um, I guess I cut it out by mistake because <coughs> it was really interesting to see their kitchen. And <coughs> the the videos were great. I had never seen anything like that. And the upstairs and the bedroom because <clears throat> I guess people were able to take pictures, but it would have to have been those that were able to get in after after the murders occurred. <coughs> right. And they didn't right. take and, that and many. And now my father... Uh, remember at the beginning of the program, uh, you were you talking about my father. My father was is a, still a law enforcement officer, uh, but he wasn't a law enforcement officer in Chattooga County. He knew uh, uh, Sheriff McConnell and uh, Tony Gilliland. Uh, and uh, one thing I forgot to mention is one of the time scene <coughs> photographers, um, Earl McConnell, I believe was his name. <laughs> He, he died about four years ago, and oh, he's he mentioned in one of my books. But uh, he had he had photos. 
he did he did crime scene photography for to, to the county sheriff's office and the Somerville City uh, <coughs> Police uh, Police Department, which is the county seat of, of Chattooga County. But he did photo he did police crime scene photographs, and he said that when he was there, he felt an uneasiness like he had never felt anywhere else. Uh, Every time he would take a picture, he would feel like somebody was staring him down, and there was nobody there except for him and the and the deceased. So uh, he was a very sane, uh, nice man uh, who was good at his job. So uh, I I take what he said uh, very serious. You know what? Uh, I... Earl Earl died about five years ago. Now who? Which and which one was Earl? Earl Earl was the crime scene photographer uh, that I knew. Uh, he was at at Corpsewood and took a lot of the pictures. Uh, Earl Earl died about five years ago, and I remember him telling me that he still has pictures. But this was, of course, before he died. He said he still had pictures that he hadn't uh, shown anybody because he couldn't explain them, uh, and he he didn't try to explain them to me either. Uh, he would just say they they were very strange pictures uh, from Corpsewood. Wow. Does anybody have those pictures? Uh, he has uh, two twin daughters living, um, but I don't know where they're living now. I don't know what happened to his belongings after he died. Oh, God. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm sure they're still floating around uh, somewhere out there, but uh, where, I don't know. Wow. He, he, didn't, uh, he didn't like to go into... To, grim detail about Corpsewood. I guess it was because he was he was actually there and and smelled the smells and, and there's a lot of people who've never been at a crime scene uh, or now people that work in hospitals can tell you when when there's when there's been blood spilled or a lot of blood spilled, you can smell it. And and I think that's one thing that bothered uh, Earl was was that smell because mm -hmm. I remember him telling me about that. Uh, for those of you who had come in late, <clears throat> Matt is a sheriff. Where are you a sheriff at, Matt? Um, I'm a sergeant for the Floyd County Sheriff's Office. In, it's in northwest Georgia. We're about 70 miles from Atlanta and about 60 miles from Chattanooga. Right in <clears throat> you know what? Also, I, I was kind of disturbed with those videos <clears throat> is the fact that Everything was like nonchalant to them. They're walking right. around dead bodies with all this blood all over, a horrible distorted bodies, and and knowing what happened to them, and then seeing the animals killed in the corner, and and walking around. And there was a bunch of people there. There right. were a lot of people um. there, and 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 you could hear some laughter in the background. And the way they were talking and handling everything, it was like just another day occurrence to them. Like, Right. I remember I, the, the first time I was in law enforcement, I saw a, a murder, a crime scene. And uh, to begin with, of course, it was shocking to me because I'd never seen one. Um, but then as time goes on and you're, you're more exposed, it... Uh, it for lack of a better term, it, it you you it, you do become callous to that sort of thing, and it it's 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 a mode of uh, of self preservation of protection. You could you laugh to keep from crying, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, but if you can't get a tolerance, if you can't build a tolerance to it, uh, you, then uh, it can really, really, really haunt you. Have you been involved in anything like that? Any crime scenes like that? Uh, the, let's see, the last uh, death I was involved in, I am a, a, a supervisor now at the, at the sheriff's office, and we um, assigned to the jail division, and we have, uh, right now we have about 700 inmates. We can house up to 900, but... Uh, yes, I've been on several uh, murder scenes. The last one that it's still yet to go to court, uh, so I won't, I won't tell any. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to name any names, mm -hmm. but there was a, a brutal murder in one of the cell blocks where 
uh, one inmate had uh, actually bashed brains out of the other inmate's head. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. One of my viewers, Jimmy, he wants to know, um, ask, ask him about the tree that was the shape of a cross upside down. And is that where they did their, well, nobody would know if they did their devil worship there, Jimmy, honey. But was there a tree upside down in, in, at, at that, uh, at that uh, castle? I never saw a tree upside down. All the trees I saw were about like you see in the video. It was a little thicker. Um, I believe the tree he's referring to is in another video that was shot up Corpsewood in the 80s. And I think you sent me the link to it. Uh, you remember the lady, uh, she was a minister, I believe, and she was there as part of her uh, her TV show. Um, and she pointed out a tree and it was very, it was very twisted and it was, it, it was very uh, unnatural looking. And there was a, a big rock placed underneath that tree that she said uh, was used as a satanic altar. Uh, that's the only thing I know that he could be talking about, but, but that's the extent of what I know about it. Okay. Well, well, Matt, thanks so much. Thanks so much for letting me share that video, and, and thanks so much for coming for coming on to the show and uh, talking about this case um, because you know you get you get so many different um, uh, opinions on this case some and and like uh, like we had talked earlier about um, there's a girl uh, there's a Facebook page uh, dedicated to the Corpsewood um, murders and castle but she refuses to um, talk about any of this, and she denies all of this. And right. she, she, she has trouble accepting the fact that they were, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to sit here from a court of judgment, but she, she, she doesn't accept the fact that they were involved in ritualistic black magic. And, <clears throat> right, so, <clears throat> and nobody's, alive to talk about it and tell us the true story and it's all as far as I can tell it's hearsay it's coming from other people uh, who had probably visited the castle and and you know it's it's like that that thing when you give somebody a message and that person passes it on and passes on and passes on and it keeps going down the line by the time it ends it's with the last person it's a, it doesn't even match the first story so, right. I, I mean, you know, who, who knows really the truth about all of this? But they, the investigators did find the, the sex pornography, the gay sex. They found the voodoo books, the, the occult books. And, and, and like you said, there were thousands of books in, 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 their, in, their, uh, in that castle. So. That's right. That's right. And, and that's, that's where I draw most of my conclusion about what was going on at Fort Wood. Yeah. Well, Matt, thank you again so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it, and it was a pleasure to have you, and it was a pleasure to meet you, Matt. Thank you so much. Thank you, Noreen. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome, honey. Good night. Have a great weekend. Good night, Good night honey. Thanks. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. <clears throat> well, everybody, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, thanks so much for uh, being here. Uh, we had a really large crowd tonight, and I really appreciate it. And guess what? Guess what? Um, next, um, and Matt, again, thank you so much for taking the time out to come onto my show. I really appreciate it. You are wonderful. Uh, next week, um, Dave Spinks and... Um, Dave Spinks, oh my gosh, this is so weird. Dave Spinks and uh, David Weatherly are coming on the show. And we're they're going to do a missing persons case. And we're not going to tell you what it is. Dave wants me to keep it a secret. So um, that's going to be, oh, that's going to be awesome. Be awesome show. And listen, you know, another thing is Phil Siracusa, 
we do the Monday night show, um, the uh, Horsefly Experiment. Well, he's coming on the show on May 5th, and he wants to get the word out, and he's going to tell all. that He told me he was going to tell all about what's going on with him. Now, if you watched last Monday's show, it was crazy. We had Karen A. Dolman, who was an expert on the Ouija board, and she gave him answers from the Ouija that went along with what's happening to him, and he was he couldn't believe it. If you get a chance, go back and watch last Monday night's show. He wouldn't talk about it, but on uh, May 5th, he's going to talk about it, and he's going to tell us some stuff that's going to be pretty scary. And he wants me to give a warning on that show as well. So everybody, thanks so much for being here and thanks so much for watching the show. And let's see. Um, and then, yeah, so anyway, and don't forget next Monday, uh, the Horsefly Chronicles. <clears throat> I'm, I'm waiting for, um, for Carissa to tell me who the guest is. Hey, also, you know what? Would you guys go over to my, uh, my fan page? Do you believe fan page? And, and, and please give that show a like. Royce, would you please show, give them the, um, the URL to that? I'd really appreciate it if you guys would, um, give me a, a like on that page. Uh, so anybody, so let me, let me do shout outs. Oh yeah. I actually Phil show, uh, the show on Monday night with the Horsefly Chronicles experiment. It's really growing. And people are really taking an interest in the show, and I'm really glad about that. Um, I I I love I love being a host on there and just sitting and listening to what's going on and and who and who the guest is and and what they're coming up with. It's crazy. It's really an enjoyment. I really enjoy that show. And so everybody, okay. So let me do some shout outs, and I love all you guys, and thank you all so much for for joining me every week. And Matt was a great guest; I really enjoyed having him. Please give my show a like, and and please, um, please, please like my my fan page. I'd really appreciate it. So let me start doing shout outs. Royce Hinman, my my mod, Sandra Miller, Para Princess Patricia, John Rad. Nancy Soplavida, Angie Simmons, Heather, oh my God, Heather Wemhoff, Zoe Small, S Summer Sims, Griffin Cochran, uh, Mama Joe Buffalo, hi honey, um, that's Joni Mitchell, Midnight Emirata, uh, River Culver, hey Culver, hi honey, hi, J hi honey, River, Jeremy Lagos, Donna Gorton, Luciana Daly, Oh, God. Okay. Oh, okay. Now you're going too fast. Margarita Harveth. Joker SDN. Um, Jimmy Cortez. Hi, honey. Unique Sweet Annie. Janet W. Tracy Boyning. Uh, Karen Hirsch. Uh, Alia. Oh, are you kidding me? Alia Gwen Arthur. Gwen Arthur? Alia Gwen Arthur. David Coffin. Hi, David. Been a long time. Um, Venter Storm. Heather, okay. Savannah, okay. Savannah Amar. Anybody else want to shout out? We still have 112. Oh, thank you. Really? Awesome. Thanks, Venter. Uh, Lucy Langner, Luce, Luce Kez Langner, Chippa Terry. I know, I know, I know uh, Ginger Simmons was in because I saw her. Renee Rates, Miss Paula, Janice Balt. Anybody else? Oh, there you are, Ginger. <laughs> Joyce Lynn, hi, honey. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Deity, oh, Desert Deity. Okay. Thanks, Desert. Desert. It's like Romper Room. Will she say my name this week? Donna Gordon. I said your name last week. Donna Gordon. Didn't I? Diane Hilbert. Crystal Tip Triplet. Thanks, honey, for showing up for the show and being a, a, a mod. And Carrie Y. 
Jen LL, Tommy Roberts. Love you guys. And, and, and Royce too. Royce is here every week for me. And, and, uh, Dave, D what happened to Dave? He was in, I saw him. My buddy, Dave, Dave Spinks, my buddy. Oh, thanks River. Hi Griffin. Yes. Hi honey. Griffin Cochran, John Johan. Yeah. Well, John, he did that on purpose because he's waiting. He's going to, he's going to tell, he's going to tell some stuff that I think we're all going to be shocked about. Jody girl, 72. Love you too, honey. There's still over a hundred people. Anybody else want to shout out? Let you know, you guys, I love you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you so much for joining me every week. And, um, you know, you can also, um, oh, hi, Maria, Sandra Amador. Hi, it's been a long time. Janet W. Oh, he had to go finish his book. Oh, okay. I did. Jeremy Lagos. Lagos. Okay. Yay. I did somebody's name right. Um, okay. Gosh, there's still over a hundred people. Anybody else want to shout out? Uh, uh, Lucas Langner. Night, Tracy. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for watching the show. And there's still a hundred people. I, I guess nobody else wants a shout out. Anyway, thank you so much. Um, all right. Oh yeah. Um, reminders. Yeah. Just have to go to paranormal zone dot TV and you, and there's a, e, there's a tab for an email. And I think there's also a contact. Sometimes people send me the contact, but you can sign up. Hi, Nora miles. You can sign up. Andrew Cox. Hi, honey. Happy trucking. Hope you're safe out there. I hope, um, if you want show reminders, just, uh, just sign up and, and you'll get a show reminder. I sent them out late today, but I did send them out. Uh, oh, Kathy Salento. Hi, honey. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go now and, um, love you guys and I'm going to go and I'm looking forward to Friday. I love my Fridays and uh, I love my Fridays. I love my weekends. So everybody have a great weekend and please join in Monday. Those Monday shows with Phil are really exciting. So uh, I'll see you all uh, on Monday night, I hope. Okay. So everybody love you guys so much. Have a great weekend and I'll see you on Monday. Okay. Good night, everybody. Did I, anybody else want to shout out before I go? Say good night, Gracie. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Good night. I love you. Good night.